Greetings and uh, fatigued salutations. Welcome to Tech 3D. My name is Neil Cross. This uh, is what's new uh, in Inventor 2020. Right, oh, cards on the table. I've just been recording for half an hour. Like my genuine first reaction to what's new, and it was it, it was half an hour of me just huffing and puffing with you know, me face palm and just like, what is why. I can't release that, right? It might have been entertaining for a few people, but it was it was long and, and really boring. Much as I can say, really, for for the What's New list in Inventor 2024. Normally, I would do... You know, when Inventor comes out with a new version, I've got this high production sort of introduction, and it's a whole shebang and all that kind of stuff. Ayrton Senna has won the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm a living legend. This year, I just, I, I'm not feeling it right. Like, and that's not because I knew what was coming wasn't that interesting. I'm just, I don't know, I just... I'm in a different place. So I thought, look, I'll, I'll cover what's new and we'll just go over the videos that Autodesk have released and, and I'll react to them and, and give some comment. Uh, but I'm str I'm, str I'm struggling. Uh, there's just, oh, right. Look, I'm, I'm going to go over them, but not, I'm not going to watch the videos. I'm just going to comment on what I've seen so far and, and, uh, and just point out and be objective as I can. But look, this is my sort of history and why I am the way I am. I started using Inventor back in 2004. In between 2004 and about 2008, nine, maybe 10, actually for about six years, Inventor received like dramatic heavy development. There was a lot of acquisitions going into Inventor. We, we got uh, the dynamic simulation going in uh, sort of the mid 2000s. We got Inventor Studio came in, right? Ray tracing came in. We got a new FEA engine. Ansys got plugged into it. All kind of huge, huge things were going on with Inventor. It was just rapidly progressing at an incredible rate. These days, though, and for quite some time, develop Inventor's matured, so it's kind of unfair to to expect those that you know that level of development. But that's kind of what what I was used to, and when I, my expectations were sort of set. So these days, when you see what's new, you know, year on year, and I, I can't help but just be a little deflated. And, well, not, yeah, deflated is probably the right word to use, and just uninterested in what's what's happening. But on the positive side, Inventor is matured. It's in a good place. And all the new features that are coming and that we're seeing, they're iterative. But when you look at Inventor as a product, those iterative additions that have been put into it, as boring and as uninteresting and as you know, just not spectacular as you would want them to be, they do accumulate into Inventor being what it is and differentiating it from the likes of Fusion 360, right? You see, the, we've got, for example, on the What's New playlist, we've got the edge symbol coming into Inventor. So this is a new annotation feature in the drawing environment, which, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure who's making drawings of bolts of that size, but you know, unless you're the actual manufacturer of the bolt. It's so dull. It's so boring, uninteresting. I, I, I'm not interested in the slightest, but this one feature in addition to the other huge arsenal of annotation tools you've got is just another thing in accumulation that differentiates inventor from from fusion 360 so yeah we've got this new edge tool coming so it's a new annotation style for drawings uh we saw graphics enhancements and um, there was a couple of good things we brought in here some of them were just really not worth being mentioned <laughs> uh you know what's need to like i mean you know being able to set the perspective view is is a default view style. It's like really, really, mate. Now, when you place the section view in a, in a model, it highlights the face that the section view has been aligned to. These wouldn't have even been footnotes in the What's New document years ago, but now it's like it's the main thing. Uh, and you can rotate the section views. Uh, there's a there's a nice little graphic of that happening somewhere. Overlay to rotate. There you go. Look, you can do that. So you can rotate it around using the triad and. We can now, I mentioned this in my last video, right? You've got the new image-based lighting HDR uh, scene images that you can have your own imported into. So like, you can go to HDR I Haven, grab one of those, and it brings it in. It's not perfect. I'm not going to rehash what I said on that, but it's, you know, it's it's better than it used to be. So there's that. It weld symbols. Again, it's like scraping the barrel for interest. You can now have in 3D annotations a weld symbol, which can then be called through into a drawing. For the few, I don't know, a few, I mean, how many 
designers and engineers actually specify the types of welds. I'm not sure or whether you just leave that to a fabricator. It'll be, it'll be you know, a mixed bag of people. Some will, some don't, but uh, you can now do that. But yeah, they can be called through on a drawing and uh, retrieved through, sure. Uh, so those 3D, 3D annotations now support weld symbols. And then, I can't even remember what this one was. Oh, yeah, you can, a new option within 3D annotations for defining the envelope. There's now an envelope symbol or something like that. Envelope requirement, that's the one. Okay, and there's a new scale, one to five. I mean, it's, uh, I'm doing it again. I'm just huffing and uh, panting. But having a new scale value in that massive list of scale values there, in my opinion, not worthy of being a, flagship headlining new feature in your in your what's new playlist so there was that um this one was though this one was harkens back to the days of new features like bend part coming in right the plastic part you know, we got a you know, this plastic part module up here that was a whole thing i remember that, that when that came in it was about 2010 2011 a whole new bunch of tools came in it was like wow look what you can now do and right sculpt and copy object came in it was like what the heck opened up a load of possibilities with an inventor so this kind of reminded me of those days and I, a new button on the toolbar whole new palette with a whole new bunch of features and it lets you specify heat treatments and paint finishes on parts and it gives you a browser folder on the left hand side which defines the, the finish and it's all um, hierarchical as well so you can have your heat treatments first then your paints and they're all uh, separated as well via model states which is the new iPod, so my iPod video is pretty much obsolete now. One of the most popular videos on my channel. So yeah, you can have, um, you know, activate a model state and it'll suppress certain heat treatments. Uh, one thing I'm, I wasn't a big fan of is when you do select a, is it that one? Yeah, so he's selecting the finish and it's putting the model into wireframe mode. It's supposed to highlight which faces have had the treatment put on them, but it, I'd have preferred a colored. Right, what's new? This one was beyond disinteresting. And, and I was quite staggered actually that this is only just coming in so you can when you're doing cut tube and pipe for the, the handful of people that do an inventor even though i've taught tube and pipe in, in like proper autodesk training courses in a, in a reseller I couldn't i mean maybe it was that long ago i can't remember but i had no idea you could you were stuck to 45 degree elbows with rigid pipe apparently you were so now you now you can have your own custom elbows just staggered that's now just a thing you know given what else is is up with tube and pipe it's probably a drop in the ocean on what needs done with that but but there you go and then we've got new revision clouds in the drawing environment I've, if memory serves me right revision clouds were a thing in the sdk i think that if you would install that the, the little, it's almost like inventor express tools in a way it would give you the revision cloud i think so for those who don't know what revision clouds are uh, there'll be quite a few people watching videos like this where they're just not familiar with the way things work in um in, in an office or in an engineering environment. When you create a drawing, you put your views, your dimensions, you're, you're detailing the product, and then you release that to be made. And it can often come back to you with errors on it, like this part doesn't fit, or we need to change this, we need to change that. You need to move a hole six inches to the left. Well, that drawing's been released already. It's been signed off and approved. If it comes back with a change, that first release, which is either revision zero, revision one, or revision A, has to be amended, and it has to be bumped up to the next revision, because you can't keep changing the same drawing over and over again, or you, there's no audit like trail on what was sent originally. The drawing would come back, and then you as the designer would say, right, well, we'll have to make this revision B now with a change on it. So you'd move the hole six inches to the left. You would have like a revision history tape. Oh, there's one up there, actually. Bracket removed, or that could be hole moved. That tells somebody what the change is from going from A to B or zero to one. But quite often you would need to point out where the change was in the drawing because people aren't right mind readers right you know they've got a huge detailed drawing with lots of detail on right where's the change without revision clouds what some people do is they'll have like a little arrow pointing to the change with a triangle on the end of it with like a or b or whatever this is the change for b it's some other people prefer to ring it in a cloud this is like the old autocad days or the old you know drafting table days you would just sort of circle it with a red pen or a cloud this is what's changed so that's that's what revision clouds are used for. It's highlighting a change between revisions, and so that's just um, <laughs> that's just came in. What's new parameters? Ah, uh, so again, an, another really really dull, dry change. But things like text and boolean values can now be exported out of the parameter window and used in iProperties as expressions. 
there'll be a, a very small subset of people who've been crying for this for a long time. It's probably an idea station change. But I mean, I've used exporting parameters before to to bring into the i properties. And what you do is you type in equals Chevron and then the name of the parameter. And then when you press return, it it calls in the value from the parameter. And then if the parameter changes, you, your description will then change or whatever property you've brought it through us. Uh, and then that can then be mapped into Vault for downstream referencing and pushing into other systems. So that's uh, that's another change. When you when you think about what Inventor used to have, uh, you know, release to release, it's it's just one of those things where I'm really struggling to, to kind of get enthusiastic about. It. Uh, this is another one which it's only going to benefit a small number of people, but for those that need this, this is going to be quite a big one. Another iterative change, but quite a big one. Uh, when you put in bounding boxes around models, so simplifying parts. Right, you've got an assembly with lots of detail in it and you want to simplify it down. Inventor can put a bounding box around a part, like a space envelope, but it would always orient the space envelope to the origin of the part. So if the part was at an angle like this and the XY plane was sort of, you know, well, there it is, it's flat. So it would draw or sort of extrude. So if you look at that plane there, it would sort of extrude the bounding box in your sort of normal to that plane. So the bounding box would be sort of this big. So that cube would still fit in the bounding box, but not sort of efficiently. You, you would really want to swivel the bounding box, sort of 45 degrees. So like that, there's a bounding box, and then there's that one there. Um, it used to be that, and now it's that. That's the bounding box. So you can have a custom orientation on the bounding boxes. Another good change, but <laughs> really. Uh, manual inspections, oh, this is, this is where I really started to struggle <laughs> in my first half hour. When a new feature in Inventor is you can now push one of your models out of Inventor and have it translated into Fusion 360 so it can then take things forward. It's a, it's a difficult one to, to, to not, not deal with, but just get excited about and, and big up. So Inventor, since 2023, I think, has got a bunch of export buttons to Fusion 360. Correct me if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, all these buttons do, they, they all do exactly the same thing which is export your inventor model into a data connect routine, translates it to a Fusion 360 file. They all do that, but they're all, these buttons are differentiated by which module is then activated in Fusion 360, like electronics cooling or additive manufacturing or the, the inspection tool or I think generative design. So it, they're all doing the same thing. It just activates a different module once it's hit the end of the road. It's it's a new feature in Inventor 2024, but it, to me, it comes across as it's just activating something new in Fusion 360, That whereas you could have done it yourself, but uh, we're going to do it for you. And then iLogic and Vault. I, I quite openly, and since day one, have said I, I, I can't start looking at iLogic. I just don't have the brain capacity to, to learn coding as much as it would have helped me at this point. And my channel would be much bigger Let's be honest, if I'd, if I'd done more iLogic content, people would have been screaming for it. I just can't. I can't face it. But apparently, iLogic could never interface directly with Vault. But now there are some APIs and calls there that can uh, interface with Vault. So I'd suspect there's quite a few people who use iLogic religiously, and there's a lot of people that do, because it, it is extraordinarily powerful. This can now interface with Vault, so that's a, that's a really good thing. Uh, one Another thing I noticed as well, on th that that was that was it. <laughs> that's, that's the playlist for... Autodesk Inventor 2024, what's new on the main channel. So I suspect that's what Autodesk feel are the, the flagship headliners, right, for new features. But I did notice that on the help section, there's a what's new area. And there's some bits and pieces in here that weren't included. And I'm not going to lie that, that a lot of them really, I, I, I'm I'm, str I'm still struggling, to be honest. Like a new feature being the, the shortcut J on the keyboard now activates the joint command. You can now use a, a circular face or a cylindrical face for assembly component patterns. You know, iteratively, they're, they're okay, but it's, it's just difficult to... <laughs> it's, it, it's difficult. Uh, we've spoke about most of these standards enhancements. Oh, sure. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, that was another one, right? The the max output for Inventor Studio for the, the image size is now 16K, I think it was. Uh, it was 4K. Support for IBLs, we saw that, and then like, the likes of this. I mean, I'm not. If I wasn't making a video, I would just I would shut the page down after seeing this. Right, when a new feature is, we've taken the noise reduction radio buttons and moved them to the left. I'm sorry, we've moved them to the right 
and we've now put the word quality above this just so you know that that's what it's actually when that's a new feature it's an it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not even an enhance is it an enhancement oh it's just really it's really hard <laughs> it really is and there you go there was something in here with threads you know you've got the thread direction parameter but i'm pretty sure there was a change in visuals for threads it might be in the graphics uh there it is yeah gpu thread rendering and another iterative thing which needed to happen just to make inventors ray tracing one step closer to actually being usable but previously with gpu ray tracing the, the, the threads would just disappear because there were there were decals right that's what a thread is an inventor is a decal and decals were never supported but now they are so yeah um that's <laughs> Look, I, I, I've no doubt the developers work really hard on this, right? They're, they're very, I know, I know a few of them. They're exceptionally passionate. They work really hard. They're, they're expected to do uh, more and more things with less resource, with tighter deadlines. And it, it's just looking at the end result on face value, it's difficult to, to, to get excited. I, I, I'm, I'm going to fall short of saying I'm unhappy with it because I'm not. I, Inventor is a great product. It's it's very matured. It's 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 outstanding. We've just I think we've just maybe hit that point. I mean, maybe we did a few years ago where we just have to get used to that. This is the new. This is the norm now for for what's what's new. And Autodesk still have products that year on year are getting huge huge new features. Like look at VRed. VRed gets year on year absolutely outstanding, exciting new features. The rest of the products. For the, for the most part, the ones that are this old, they're, they're matured, right? They've they've peaked. It's just iterative at this point. I can't hold that against them, really, because like I said during the video, these iterative changes, when they accumulate, differentiate Inventor from other products. The, the likes of Fusion 360, all, you know, the likes of Onshape, potentially, right? Those other competing products that don't have the little bits and pieces that Inventor, the reasons why you would potentially choose Inventor over those are these little iterative things that accumulate. So can't be too grumpy about it, but it's just difficult to get excited about it and, and, and hype it up and present it in a way that's sort of meaningful. Like this is, it's worth upgrading now because of this. We, we just don't really have those moments anymore. So there you go. That's that. That was Inventor, Inventor 2024. What's new going through the guides and that that's like literally it. I mean, I'll, I'll link in the description, the playlist and the what's new guides. So if you want to scan through it yourself and see if there's anything else in there that might Peak your interest, go for it, mate. So yeah, I think that the days are, of me doing huge production value, what's new guides for for Inventor are long gone in this. And, well, and as always, well, want to sponsor one and pay for it. <laughs> they've they've literally, literally never done that. I just spotted they've done that for a 3D Max creator. Sponsored by Autodesk. What's new guide for Autodesk 3DS Max 2024? Where's my sponsor? Am I not, am I not important enough, Autodesk? My channel not big enough for you? Or am I too controversial? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, there you go. That'll do for this one. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Neil Cross. This is Tech3D. Get subscribed if you're not already, mate. Check out the back catalog. There's tons of tutorials kicking around the back catalog. It's getting old a bit now, but some of them, a lot of them are still, still relevant. So if you want to see those, get subscribed. And um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below about the new release. I think, I, I predict it's going to be a lot of people saying it's just not worth them upgrading, which is fair enough at this point. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.